When this weekend started, four playoff spots were up for grabs. When it ended, they were all claimed. A wild weekend to say the least in MLS action. Jonah Friedman here with armchair analyst Matt Doyle. We're here to tie it all up for you in a nice little bow with Weekend Wrap. And we're going to start with the top three games of the weekend, starting with Sunday's finale up at CenturyLink Field where the Sounders outlasted FC Dallas. Yeah, three to one in this one. Uh, two things really stood out to me. The first, Freddie Montero. If he plays like this in the playoffs, the Sounders have as good a shot as anyone to win the whole thing. But the problem, Freddie, is you never know which version is going to show up. Uh, but he was dominant a against a pretty decent FC Dallas team and it really led the Sounders to a, a kind of a signature victory. The second thing that stood out to me in this one was Zach Lloyd complaining to the ref and costing his team perhaps a playoff spot. Complaining to the ref and about refs is almost epidemic levels in MLS. So I was kind of glad to see a team immediately start whining and immediately get punished. Hopefully the rest of the league takes it to heart. Play the game. Stop yelling. Stop complaining. Stop crying. 3-1 Sounders. Number two on our list, it was a real love fest, I thought, at Buckshaw Stadium between San Jose and L.A. Yeah, some great post-game sound bites from Omar Gonzalez calling the Quakes a joke and saying the way they play the game is embarrassing. Well, guess what, Galaxy? For the third time this season, the Quakes rallied to get a result. They got a draw here, a very good one. And honestly, the Quakes really didn't have anything to play for. They had the Supporters' Shield wrapped up. A very chippy game, uh, one that the Galaxy really needed for the playoff position. They're going to end up in the knockout round game as a result. But some good stuff for the Galaxy. Edson Buttle looking fantastic up top with Robbie Keane. That was the duo at the beginning of the season. Didn't work out. It's working out now. The Galaxy could use it. And by the way, if the Galaxy get past Vancouver in this knockout round game, which we all expect them to, guess who they're going to face in that first round? Number one, arguably one of the best games in MLS this season, it was DC United clinching a playoff spot in a comeback against the Columbus Crew at RFK. The crew were desperate, needed a win to stay in it, uh, and they really gave everything they had, but DC just had a little too much, were a little too smart there at the end and took a 3-2 win. Uh, but it was spectacular. It was end-to-end -end stuff. All the big players showed up and played well. Federico Iguain uh, really pulling the strings for the crew. And you just gotta give a ton of credit to DC. When Dwayne De Rosario went down, Everybody thought they were done, but Ben Olsen finally figured it out, said, you know what, we're going to play really defensive in the central midfield, and we are going to rely on Pontius and Nick DeLeon to provide the attack with Andy Nahar overlapping from fullback. That is a tough, tough look to stop. Take a look at our top performances of the weekend. Again, a great week for goalkeepers. Michael Gishburning in some of his best performance as a Seattle Sounder uh, after his midweek performance against RSL. Another good performance against Dallas. Jimmy Nielsen, great against New York. Uh, these are the two guys, one and two, in the goalkeeper of the year race, I would say. Uh, Nielsen probably has the edge, and the game against New York shows why he... he his team was sluggish. They gave up a lot of chances that they usually don't give up, and he was there on the end of all of them, shutting them down, taking the ball off Thierry Henry's foot, making a couple spectacular saves, which is not to undersell what Gisburning did, especially midweek. Uh, he had a couple of late saves, one on Chris Schuler in particular, that were just spectacular. Honorable mentions here for Player of the Week, Brad Evans from Seattle, playing virtually every position on the field for the standards and doing well, adding a couple of goals, very timely. Robbie Keane looking like a beast, in beast mode against the Earthquakes, looking good for the playoffs. And let's not forget Captain Jack. Uh, Jack Jewsbury had that spectacular 30-yard volley against the Vancouver Whitecaps. Gave the Portland Timbers the Cascadia Cup, so congratulations to them. Let's take a quick look at the standings. It is chaos out east. Sporting Kansas City still on top with 60 points, but that might not last if they cannot get business done this week against Philadelphia because right behind them, DC United with 57 points. They could overtake them the final weekend, but they could also finish anywhere between first and fourth place. Same goes for Chicago in third place. They have 56 points, could end up anywhere between second and fifth. New York with 54 points, and Houston for now at the bottom of that playoff picture with 53. Out West, it's a little more straightforward. San Jose, the Supporters' Shield winners, they have clinched that number one seed with 65 points. A number two and number three, that's settled. It's going to be RSL and Seattle. Both are on 56 points, but it's a matter of who's going to be number two, who's going to be number three. L.A. in fourth place, guaranteed with 51 points. They're going to be hosting that first-round knockout game against the Vancouver Whitecaps. We're going to get out of here, but there's plenty to check out this week. There's a crazy final week in the Eastern Conference to look out for. There's CONCACAF Champions League going into the final of the group stage. We're going to be there all week. You shouldn't miss it.